let's talk a little bit about what happens to a breast during or or post menopause. I mean, obviously, we we understand some things that are happening during menopause, right? So, estrogen, progesterone levels are falling dramatically. Presumably, there are anatomical changes occurring in the breast as the breast no longer needs to maintain the infrastructure for lactation. Um, anything worth talking about there specifically as it pertains to increasing risk? Only uh, indirectly. Um, so estrogenization of the breast does account for breast density, which is something that is often seen on a mammogram. And there is a relationship between more breast density and a slightly greater risk of developing breast cancer. Presumably that relates somehow to the woman's lifetime exposure to estrogen. And so postmenopausal women who have more dense breast tissue on mammogram are at slightly greater risk of developing breast cancer. And it's not simply that the density makes it harder to see the breast cancer. Um, so um, there's a, a sorry. A, sorry, just to, just to interject, Hal, to make sure I understand: uh, is estrogen controlling ductal density, or it, is it? It's, actually, it's more about the the soft tissue component of the breast. The the ductal issue. The actual fatty tissue. Yeah, I mean the ductal. There, in a premenopausal woman, obviously with the monthly cyclical variation, the breast will have changes in both the ductal tissue and the other tissues, and. I want to be clear, if anybody listening to this is an embryologist or a breast surgeon, they're rolling their eyes here because I'm not going to get all the details correct. But in broad terms, um, there is monthly change in the breast architecture and tissue. But for postmenopausal women on the screening mammogram, that density reflects um, the, fibrous, the fibrous tissue, the fatty tissue in the breast, not specifically the glandular tissue. Okay. And then just kind of bringing it back to a point full circle, you mentioned at the outset that regardless of the size of a woman's breast, so if you compare a woman with an A cup to a D cup, the glandular tissue is still relatively consistent. I actually took that to mean the risk of breast cancer by breast size was also relatively similar given that they're dealing with the same amount of glandular tissue. Is that, a, is that an incorrect assumption? No, that's a correct assumption. Um, it is. There okay. is, uh, you know, Breast size at the extremes tends to correlate with um, obesity. There is a really, there's a, a weak but detectable mm. link between obesity and breast cancer risk. So perhaps a slight, slight increased risk in in right, women but it's who that's heavier, confounded but, to your point. Um, but yeah. um, you know, we don't fundamentally think that um, uh, breast size affects risk. Okay, but density per se so does, density is and marker, not just from a detection standpoint. Correct. Density is a marker that is associated with a slightly yep. increased risk again. But all of these, you know, again, we're talking about moving we're the talking needle small from that risks. one yep. in eight to a one in seven or six lifetime risk. So it's, it's the kind of thing that, you know, from the public health point of view is very important for any given woman rarely is a huge driver. And I, I just point that out to draw a distinction between a genetic syndrome or specific behaviors like smoking that we know are clearly a dominant risk factor for many different kinds of tumors and, and, and things like that. Let's talk a little bit about some of those other modifiable risk factors then. So we, we, we know that I guess the WHO would say that the top two environmental uh, triggers for cancer are in order smoking and obesity. Um, now, I've always thought that obesity is just a proxy for insulin resistance and that it's really the hyperinsulinemia, the excess growth factors and the inflammation that track with obesity rather than the adiposity per se that is driving that risk. Um, how much do those two factors, smoking and call it obesity and right up to type 2 diabetes, how much are those moving the needle at the individual level for risk? So smoking really is not a major risk factor for breast cancer. Okay. Um, and uh, it's because of, in, in my shorthand, you know, it's simply a matter of, you know, the smoke affects the aerodigestive tract and uh, some of the internal organs like the kidneys that end up filtering out some of the carcinogens and stuff, but mm -hmm. it's really not part of the, the breast story, if you will. Um, yep. Obesity, as we mentioned, is a relatively weak risk factor um, relative to many others and certainly not one that has allowed us to say, for instance, stratify patients for high risk screening versus not, or offer mm. reassurance to a woman that she is not um, uh, at jeopardy for breast cancer because of uh, lean body mass or, or things like that.